Today on The Hookup, I'm gonna show you how to build motorized blinds for as little as $10 per blind. And even if you don't have horizontal blinds like me, stick around to learn how to get the most out of these $3 step motors. After automating my curtains a few months ago, I was becoming increasingly annoyed at the need to manually open the blinds after the curtains had opened. But spending $75 to $100 per blind to automate them was pretty much out of the question. So began my journey into DIY blind automation. Based on other tutorials, my first attempt to motorize these blinds used servos. I pretty quickly abandoned that attempt due to the nature of how a servo actually works. A servo uses a potentiometer to determine its absolute position and then make micro adjustments to its voltage in order to keep it in the right place. This means that throughout the day, you'll hear the servo in your blinds making whining noises as it adjusts its position to resist gravity. It also means that the servo is constantly on, and if it's fighting the load of your blinds all day, it can overheat pretty quickly. One option to combat this would be to convert to a continuous servo that doesn't have any positional feedback. But at that point, you basically just have a DC motor. And since I wanted to have precise control over the position of my blinds, stepper motors seemed like a much better fit. In order to keep the cost as low as possible for this project, I purchased a set of 2.8 BYJ stepper motors, which are available on Amazon for under $12 for a set of five motors and drivers. A pretty impossible price to beat. These motors are heavily geared, and initially I crossed my fingers and hoped that I'd be able to use these five volt steppers and drivers right out of the box to complete my project. But nothing's ever that easy, is it? After designing some parts to fit the motor and the driver and an adapter for the tilt shaft of the blinds, I was disappointed to find out that the motors could only move the blinds through about 80% of their range of motion, and they lacked the torque to finish the job. As it turns out, the last 10% of motion on either extreme is pretty important. That's actually the part that blocks out the light. If you have extremely small or light blinds, you might be able to get away with running these motors at 5 volts, but it wasn't going to cut it for my application. But I wasn't about to give up that easily. Over the next few days, I experimented with worm gears, planetary gears, multiple motor setups, and pulley systems, all with varying levels of success. But overall, I still wasn't happy enough with the results to recommend them to you. I needed to be able to give these things more power, but the driver that they came with didn't seem to like it when I supplied it with 12 volts. And because the 2.8 BYJ is a five wire unipolar stepper motor, it isn't compatible with most other available stepper drivers. Luckily for us, the 2.8 BYJ can be converted to a bipolar motor pretty easily. Without going into too much mechanical detail, a unipolar stepper motor has a common voltage connection between each coil, and a bipolar motor doesn't. All we need to do to convert this from a unipolar motor into a bipolar motor is disconnect the common wire between the two coils. Under the blue plastic cover, you'll find a small PCB where the wiring harness is connected. Scrape away the center trace with a knife or small screwdriver to disconnect the common wire. Then you just snip off the red wire from the harness and you're all done. Now we can use almost any stepper driver to deliver the needed voltage and current that we need to increase the torque to our required level. For my project, I decided to use the small DRV8825 driver because they're small and cheap, and I had them on hand. But I have to admit that I hate working with these things. They've got a potentiometer on them to set the current limit for your specific motor. But I feel like you only get maybe two or three chances to get it right before that potentiometer breaks and you have to throw the whole driver in the trash. For this project, I decided to just skip it completely and leave the potentiometer at the 12 o'clock position and not mess with it. But I fully recognize that this is way too high of a current for these motors. The good news is that we're only gonna run them for a few seconds at a time, and they aren't receiving any power at all the vast majority of the time, so they'll have plenty of time to cool down. Another bonus to sleeping these motors is that when they aren't in use, you can manually tilt the blinds with minimal resistance from the motor. Two modifications that I always make to these small drivers before deploying them is to cut off any unused pins and then create a solder bridge between the reset pin and the sleep pin. I prefer to use the enable pin to sleep these drivers instead of the sleep pin since the sleep still sends a little bit of current to the motor to apply some holding torque. In this case, the gearing of the motors provides plenty of holding torque anyways. Also, these cheap motors have a pretty terrible backlash, so there's no need to use the sleep pin over the enable pin. Alright, on to the setup. To remove your blinds, you'll usually need to release the clip on one side of the blinds with a screwdriver. 
After that, you can slide the blinds out. And to make your life easier, you should retract the blinds at least 90% of the way before pulling them down. Inside, you'll find a tilting mechanism based around a tilt rod that can be in a few different shapes and sizes. Mine happen to be 4mm squares, but they also come in 5mm square, 5mm hexagon, and 6mm hexagon. I've included the STL files to print the adapters for each type of tilt rod. A fair warning though, I only have 4mm square rods to test fit, so my other files are completely untested. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't work though. You'll need to remove the original worm gear tilting mechanism to install your new stepper motor. It usually just slides right out with a little bit of force. Next, you'll need to install your motor and adapter. I 3D printed a mount for the motor to fit inside my standard 2 inch blinds and I've included that STL file as well, but you may need to modify it for your needs. I've gotten more than a few comments about people being disappointed with the need to 3D print parts for my projects. And I always try to avoid 3D printing whenever possible to be inclusive. But I'm just going to come out and say it. If you're into DIY and you don't have a 3D printer yet, it is officially time to get one. If you need to justify your purchase with math, you can think about it like this. The cheapest option for Wi-Fi retrofit blind motors is about $120 per blind. So if you buy a 3D printer and then you automate three blinds using this design, you'll actually save $100. And who doesn't want to save $100? I'll go ahead and just leave that link down in the description. Just think of all the money you could save. After you've installed the motors, it's time to get wiring. In my application, I'll be running the power cables behind this valence in my bedroom. Each stepper driver needs a few different wires. 5 volt power, 12 volt power, step input, direction input, sleep input, and ground. I'm going to use CAT5 cable to run these inputs since all the signals are relatively low current except for the 12 volt line, which is still pretty low. I'm going to use one twisted pair for 12 volts, one twisted pair for ground, and then one wire each for direction, sleep, step, and 5 volts. To make everything look a little bit nicer, I'm going to use these DuPont connectors on the ends of my CAT5 cable. This connector and crimper set is another thing that will significantly increase the quality and look of your projects for a pretty small price. This step is totally optional, but it does make installation much easier. Essentially, you just strip off a few millimeters of insulation from the end of your wire, load up a male or female DuPont connector face down in the crimper, insert your wire, and clamp down. This kit comes with different size sleeves to group your wires together, which is really nice when you're hooking wires up in tight places. Instead of needing to place each individual wire on the right terminal, you just need to make sure that the connector is in the correct orientation. I chose to control all three motors from a single node MCU, so I connected the wires from each blind together before attaching them to the node MCU. This node MCU is in a small plastic case that I think I got from buying some transistors on Amazon. You could 3D print a case if you wanted to, but this one works fine for me. On the blind side, the DuPont connectors make it really easy to attach the driver and fit it into the cutout in the motor mount. The sketch included in the description has links to all the libraries used, and the pins that are in my wiring diagram are the default pins in the sketch. All you need to do is update the Wi-Fi and MQTT information and then upload it to your node MCU and you're good to go. After you've uploaded the sketch and wired your motor, you can change its position by sending integer values to this MQTT topic. Be aware that it will use the first value that you send as its home or current value. So you'll need to actually send two different values before the motor will move for the first time. Once deployed, this allows the blinds to receive a retained value for their current position in the event that they lose Wi-Fi connection or they reboot. I've also included all the YAML that you'll need in order to add these blinds to Home Assistant as a cover. I know not everyone has the ability to run hidden wires behind their blinds, but if you do, this is pretty much an unbeatable option. My cost for motorizing these three blinds was less than $10 per blind, and I'm really happy with the outcome. As always, if you're interested in building this project, I've included all the links for the products that I've used down in the description. Most of those links are Amazon affiliate links, so clicking on them does support my channel. If you're interested in supporting my channel directly through Patreon like these awesome people, the link to that page is down in the description as well. As always, if you have an issue with this project, please post a comment below. And if you find any problems in my code, please post an issue on the GitHub page and I'll respond to it as soon as I can. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.